everybody. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming out. My wife and I are very lucky. We have two beautiful boys. They aren't cheap, though. They require uh, food, clothing, shelter, <laughs> annual celebrations of their birth. <laughs> I'm in a real sweet spot with my boys right now, though. It's a window every parent should take advantage of. It's when they're old enough to eat McDonald's, but young enough to not complain when I eat a significant portion of their meal. <laughs> and you see this in McDonald's every single day. You walk in, you see a parent on one side of the table, no food in front of the parent. <laughs> Across the table, there's a four-year-old with a 10-piece nugget. The kid's not eating 10 nuggets. <laughs> And you know what the most telling sign is? It's the amount of dipping sauces in front of that kid. <laughs> Kids like ketchup. Kids adore ketchup. Kids will do anything and everything to get more ketchup. My sons use completely inanimate objects as delivery mechanisms to get them more ketchup. Do you know who likes creamy ranch? Middle-aged parents. <laughs> Do you know who likes zesty buffalo? 37-year-olds <laughs> with concerning blood pressure. <laughs> you know who's been mixing sweet and sour and barbecue since Cheers was on the air? <laughs> You're looking at him. <laughs> and McDonald's knows it too. Did you know that they have two sizes of Happy Meals now? That's basically like them saying, here's one size that's appropriate for your child. And here's another size that we're all being adults here. If you're willing to admit that you'll be taking part in this dining experience as well. Wouldn't it be great if in the larger size Happy Meal they uh, included like a prize for the parents? You know, just like completely acknowledging the situation. You know, they still have the, still have the prize for the kid. You know, they still have Mr. Incredible in there. Isn't that sick that I know Mr. Incredible's in the Happy Meal right now? You know, but they have like a little prize for the parents, something age appropriate. Maybe like, um, like an eyeglass repair kit. You know those little screwdrivers? Parenting allows you to rediscover some of life's simple pleasures. You know, for instance, the car wash. My son and I go like once a month, we love it. The car wash sells an interesting mix of items. You know, things that make sense, like windshield wiper fluid and air fresheners, and then completely random items like beach umbrellas and compression knee braces. Hats that say, Detroit Pistons, 2004 NBA champions. A real popular item in North Jersey, sure you. But my son and I love to go. You know, it's one of those old school car washes where you get out of the car and you go inside and you follow along the progress of the wash on this long wall of windows. The highlight for him, though, is the soap button. It's this big red button at the point where the car gets doused with soap. Now, mind you, the button doesn't do anything. <laughs> It's not connected to anything. It's the brainchild of some like car wash marketing innovator who said, if we can get the kids, we'll get the parents. And they did, and it's brilliant. <laughs> so on the way, I sell the button big time. I'm like, buddy, when we get there, you're my soap guy. I'm relying on you. I need you on that button. I want you on that button. <laughs> So he gets into it, you know? He's breathing heavy, he's grunting, he's switching arms, he's using his elbow. He's putting every ounce of his 40 pound frame into this job. And again, it's not a job at all. It was around this point, the last time we were there, this little song and dance that we do, that I noticed a gentleman walk in behind us. I could tell right away by his mannerisms he had never been here before, and he was watching us intently. I knew where this was going and I couldn't have been more excited. This gentleman had an internal debate going on. Did he need to press this button? Or is it a sham designed to trick kids into thinking that they're playing a role here? 
Well, I was not about to solve that mystery for him. So as my son and I continued on down the line of windows, he nervously approached the button. I saw his eyes darting back and forth between the button and the car. Button car. Button car. Button car. I saw him extend his fingers, exposing his palm for optimal button pressing formation. Put his hand over the button, and as his car entered the soaping area, he pressed it. Not only did he press it, he held it. He held it for the length of his entire vehicle. My son didn't understand the gravity of what happened that day. One day I'll explain it to him. But as we walked out of that car wash, I turned to him and I said, buddy, this goes to show, when you do your best, when you give it your all, when you commit 110% to an idea, like you did with that button, good things will happen to you. Like convincing a grown man that a fake button dispenses soap. Thanks everybody.